Hello again and welcome. It's been about a year ago, I guess, I made a video showing this Nano VNA. Since that time, I've had a few people write in comments about torquing the connectors. So Nathan Conrad leaves a comment that according to Keysight, the SMA should be 5 inch pounds, I assume to 8 inch pounds, for a 3.5 millimeter, which is an SMA connector. Uh, I've damaged connectors before, pulling the nut off of the male connector. So... He's basically trying to torque this and is yanking this nut right off of the sleeve here. However, in this case, I'm more worried about cracking the printed circuit board tracks. Another note is that the applied torque depends on where you hold the wrench. Often there's a line about one centimeter from the end of the handle marking where you apply the force. And I would say all those points are valid. This is a comment from a person named Shark Levin. Sorry if I chopped up your name too much. Uh, the soldering on some of these Chinese clones might not be up to good practice. So you could snap the connectors off of the board, even with proper use of that torque wrench, if the connector was being held on by cold solder joints with not enough solder. Or she might also rip some of the traces off the printed circuit board. This comment's from Antonio Rivera. Uh, Joe, you're probably right about how to tighten the connectors, but... I find doing it by hand is safer. That's probably true. I just tighten until snug and then leave it. Using a torque wrench could result in over tightening. All the best. This is from a viewer 3QDX. Torque? Question, question. You really need a torque wrench for the SMA connectors? Can we just not firmly screw on the various attachments? Because as you've said, if you torque them too tightly, you'll damage the unit. Recently I received a comment from Harry Johnson. And he says, I wouldn't use a torque wrench on that VNA. Torque wrenches are fine on passives and amp outputs, but so much on solder connections. I think he means and not so much on solder connections. And I think, again, specifically, he's probably talking about end launch connectors. I've seen loads of connectors ripped off their solder pads by techs using wrenches. A touch more than finger tight is sufficient. The first one I'd like to address again is just the finger tightening. In most of my responses, I'll tell people it really depends on what frequency you're working at. I've ran repeatability studies where I've used my lab-grade network analyzer, basically taking a component and putting it on the unit, taking it back off, putting it back on, and just taking measurement after measurement and then comparing the results, and then doing that by hand versus using a torque wrench. And you can see at the very high frequencies, it definitely makes a difference. So again, if you're an amateur radio operator or a CB operator for that matter, and you're working in, you know, sub 50 megahertz, it's probably not a big deal to just hand tighten them. I'd say even for the two meter guys, probably not a big deal. Now again, to be clear, I'm not an amateur radio operator. I'm not a CB operator. I did mention that I was licensed when I was younger, but yeah, I don't do anything with radios today. The next group talks about damaging the connectors when using a torque wrench. Certainly over torquing these connectors could damage them. I've never seen, you know, the nut come off of one of these connectors from torquing it. Again, I don't have any concern about using a torque wrench with the original Nano. A couple of things to keep in mind is when you're attaching your cables to the Nano, if there's any resistance at all when you're finger tightening them, don't go any further. Because what you don't want to do is damage these connectors by cross threading them. Once you have the connector tight, which this one right now is, again what we want to do is make sure that we're holding the wrench perpendicular and again we can just creep up on this. Don't hold it on an angle, just keep it straight and again just apply pressure until the wrench clicks. Now this particular wrench is 8 inch pounds and again I have a few different wrenches. This one is made by CDI. You can see this particular screwdriver can be set between 4 and 40 inch pounds. And you can see I've made a few attachments. This is a socket. And here you can see I have a crow foot wrench. And again, we put that over our connector like this. And we just twist it until it breaks over. So you can see with this arrangement, I could get into some very tight places where I may not be able to do it with a standard torque wrench like this. Again, it's very important that when you make your connections, you don't want that center pin turning. So try to hold the center conductor rigid and then tighten the outside nut. So with some devices like this little adapter, you can see they have a flat. This allows us to apply a wrench. So while I'm attaching this, I can hold that center pin rigid 
and then I can go ahead and torque the connector. This is currently set for six inch pounds of torque. So what exactly does that mean? Well, imagine a cantilever and we were a distance of six inches away from the center. So about here is our six inch mark. And if I applied a one pound force or if I hung a weight on here that was one pound, that would give me six inch pounds of torque. So if I doubled this to say two pounds, that would give me 12 inch pounds of torque. One way you could test your torque wrench for calibration would be to have some kind of a jig like this. You can see I just have a shaft, which is just a bolt. I've got a hex nut here and a couple of ball bearings. So this is free to rotate. I can put this into a vise like so. So then I could just attach my one pound of weight out here and then set the torque wrench where it just breaks over with that one pound of weight. And that would give me my six inch pounds. So of course, if your torque wrench isn't in calibration, which if you bought a very cheap one, uh, that could certainly be the case. And certainly having a torque wrench out of calibration and trying to torque precision connectors, that could definitely be a recipe for disaster. Here I just have a chunk of steel. I don't know what the mass of this is. And I'm just gonna place this on the end of our fixture like so. And if I place our torque wrench on here, you can see at this location, I can just barely lift the weight. You can see as I move this out, it's requiring more torque to lift the weight. Again, as I move it closer, you can see even here, it's not a problem to pick it up. Let's just move the weight out here further. And you can see here, again, I can't pick the weight up. But now watch what happens as I move my hand closer to the end of the torque wrench. And you can see here, it's no problem picking that weight up at all. Again, just moving it out another inch, I can't pick it up. So yes, hand position is going to be very important. Sometimes I'll rest my fingers up on the neck, but I'm always pushing from the palm of my hand on the back of the handle here. So for the next group of people who are saying that you could actually tear a connector off of the board or tear some traces, what I'd like to do is just run a few experiments. So here I have a circuit board. This is just one of my test boards, and you can see I have two end launch connectors mounted up to this. Now this connector on the left, you can see it's not even soldered to the board. You can see how these connectors are made. They basically wrap around the circuit board. So what I'm going to do is attach this little connector here. And we're just going to take my torque wrench. And I'm going to snug this thing down. You see that? There's no solder on this circuit board whatsoever. You see that connector doesn't even move. Let's just try it with this torque wrench. So again, completely unsoldered, and it's basically staying in place. Now, of course, some people are going to say, well, the Nano uses cheap connectors, and that's very possible. So here what I have is a small, cheap attenuator board. This thing costs about $10 with shipping. You can see the distance between the fingers it's quite a bit narrower and the fingers are also shorter the thickness of the circuit board is about the same so let's just go ahead and try torquing one of these you can see no problem at all again we'll try it with our other torque wrench see no problem so you can see even with these cheap connectors, it's not a problem torquing them. Notice the surface finish on these. When I purchased this, this is pretty much what it looked like. I'm sure there's been some degradation of the plating, but this was bad right from the time I purchased it. So for those people that are talking about actually tearing one of these connectors off the circuit board, let's just see how much torque it actually takes. Again, typically for an SMA, 8 inch pounds is about the max that you're ever going to apply to it. 
and you can see already 8 inch pounds is not going to break these connectors loose. I'll tell you what, so what I'm going to do is we're going to start with the connector that isn't even soldered to the board. I have this wrench that I use with my motorcycles. The lowest that this wrench is going to go is 25 inch pounds. That's already three times higher than what an SMA is going to be rated for. Again, this is a click type. Let's just attach our socket. And I'm going to start snugging this thing up right there. You heard it click. And there we broke one of the tongs. So at 25 inch pounds, with the connector not being soldered, you can see we broke the connector. Again, before we broke that finger off, I'm sure that we've already damaged the mating surfaces. So let's try the same test using our second connector. Again, this will be 25 inch pounds. You can hear it clicking right there. You can see this is holding. Let's just go ahead and take this thing up a little higher. So I've increased this an additional 5 inch pounds. Again, this is 30 inch pounds. You can see we're twisting our circuit board inside of our little pan of ice. You can see it holds us just fine. Let's just try it in our hand. So I've increased it in an additional 5 inch pounds. So this is going to be 35 inch pounds. Again, we were at 30. Ugh, right there. Of course, that's damaged our connector toward the back side of the circuit board right off. But again, that's 35 inch pounds of torque, and what we're supposed to be at is about 8 inch pounds. So let's see how that compares against our little cheap attenuator here. This is with our regular torque wrench. And you can see there's no problem with this at all. And we'll reset our large torque wrench for 25 inch pounds. Again, roughly three times higher than the maximum you should ever apply. And let's see what happens. Oh, right there. And you can see right there, I've tore it off the circuit board. But again, three times higher than what the maximum should have ever been. So just for the fun of it, you can see I brought it lower than its lowest setting. Obviously this wrench is not going to be accurate in this area. Hopefully that will give us about 15 inch pounds of torque. Again, that would be about double the maximum. And you can see, even there, it's no problem. Let's try going up another 5 inch pounds. No problem at all. And you can see we're back to 25 inch pounds. That's where the first one broke at. Again, it was like right on the edge. Oh, oh you can hear it cracking. Hear it? Right there. Yep, so right about 25 inch pounds before we start tearing these off of the circuit board. So, again, very cheap connectors. This is a very low cost items. I would say if you're tearing the connectors off of the circuit board, one of two things. Either you're buying a very cheap torque wrench that isn't calibrated. It's also possible that the person using the wrench hasn't been trained on its proper usage. In that original video, I talked about how I loaned out a torque wrench and the person that borrowed it had never used one before. And unfortunately, they didn't ask how to use it. And they came back and they had actually damaged the connector on the piece of test equipment that they were trying to torque the connector to. So I asked them what they were doing and they said the wrench never clicked. And they had the thing off to the side like this. And of course, that's not how to use it. So again, as long as your people are trained, using a good torque wrench, the torque wrench has been calibrated. 
I don't see any problem as far as torquing these connectors even with something as cheap as this attenuator. That's all for this video. Hope you found it useful. Till the next video, stay safe. Later.